This is the Red All Over away end. Uh, I'm here with Adam Oxley. Uh, we've just played at Oakwell um, in a charity game. Well, the academy pitch. No, yeah, the academy, the academy pitch. pitch. Not actually on, not you know, Oakwell. Um, and you had a bit, a, a bit of hit as well, didn't you? Yeah, got cl clattered in the head, which is always what you want on your birthday as well, which is absolutely uh, ideal. Um, so I managed about 80 minutes. Um, did all right. Gave away a goal to uh, Clark Heat Media Officer at yeah, the club. Which we had to give him one though, didn't we? We, we did. Had to give him one. It, it, that was painful, but you know, it was a great runabout, great cause, all for Barnsley Hospice today. Um, brilliant to be here, you know, just to even be on the academy pitch with 10 people watching, that's more watching than you normally get, <laughs> isn't it? So it is, it is. And uh, just to mention as well that Joe didn't score, didn't really play well, did he? To be honest, well, yeah, gave it the big talk, didn't it? Yeah. Half time, gave it the big talk, got the big chance in the last couple of minutes, and unfortunately just went wide. But mm. that's that's football, isn't it? Yep, that's wondered it. Poor game from him. But um, switch on to Barnsley. Um, so far, what, what do you think of Barnsley's transfer window? It, it's kind of one of those at the minute. We, we need to see the full summer, and I'm not sitting on the fence with that one. It sounds like I am, but the problem at the minute is there's still a couple of players you feel may well leave this summer. Styles and Helic, in particular, they weren't at the media day the other day. Neither was Morris, of course. Mm -hmm. He then left. But having chatted to the new players, they all come across pretty well. I think you look at the track record; they're very much Barnsley signings. A couple of, you know, 24, 25, which is quite old yeah, for, yeah, from is. a Barnsley perspective. But they all came across well. You feel at the minute, though, with the players that have gone, one or two, probably two forwards are a must this yeah, summer. Definitely. Really are a must. And that's kind of, I think, what it'll all be judged on. Yeah, do you think, so do you think if we did bring in them two forwards, then... We could be on four because I think fans this season have we signed we kind of like resign ourselves to mid table a bit kind of like a rebuild season. But I think given that these players which have come in, do you think now two forwards might push us up into that top six like interplay of contention, or do you think that's it's still one season too many like one season too soon? It's difficult because last season was so poor that you just wonder what the club is going to be like. What are those players going to be like that went through that experience last season mm -hmm. and? The quality is clearly there because most of them played the year before and got into the semis yep. of the playoffs. That's a point that I made to the new signings when I came in. So the, the quality is, is clearly there at the club. For me personally, I, I'm not looking at this season as a mid-table season for Barnsley. I still think that the club is big enough and strong enough and even some of the players that will remain with the new signings, I think Barnsley has still got to be looking at top six. Um, and... I, I'd i still be, I think, at the end of the season, if Barnsley finished, say, 10th, 11th, 12th, be a little disappointed. That That's just kind of my perspective on it, having covered the club for a long time. I think the club's been to this level, done well at this level. Um, he's saying this summer that he's going to recruit a little bit more experience as well. Which I think everybody wanted to hear. You know, I don't. Yeah. I don't think anybody inherently has got an issue with the youth policy, but you've got to have one or two with them, and that's kind of what worked a couple of years ago. You know, brought Solbauer in the middle of the season. It added a bit of that experience with yeah. it. Brought Morris in with DK the other year, and it just one or two little signings like that. So yeah, I, is is a mid-table season a building season going to be the worst thing in the world? No, mm. because the, the the worry after last year would be that Barnsley start poorly and have a struggle year and you've seen clubs fall through the division so that is absolute minimum can't happen but I personally still think a couple more a few more signings and there's still enough players here to, to give that top six a go yeah I think I must agree I think top six should, should, should really be aimed this season but obviously with Morris departing you just feel like he had all them qualities to really thrive in league one and I feel like he's going to be a big miss what's your thoughts on Morris leaving because for me he won one which I kind of resign myself to like Woodrow leaving Helix Styles because you'd think they cover because we need to cover that um, loss of income from being relegated and I thought Morris yeah. was one that we could keep hold of but obviously we've not. Yeah, I think you looked at it at the start of the transfer window and at the end of last season and thought, right, there's there's kind of four prize assets, aren't there? In in Styles and Helic and Woodrow and Morris. If you could keep two of them, wouldn't that be great? Mm. At the minute, it potentially looks like Barnsley aren't going to keep any of them. Clearly, two are still at the club in Styles and Helic, and mm. as far as where Styles played in the the friendly yesterday. Yeah, yeah. But it's one of those where. I think Morris was one of them because Woodrow was the kind of the the 
the one that people predominantly talked about, he got the 50-odd goals in, however many appearances that you kind of saw him going. But everyone had picked their hopes on Carlton staying. With his kind of experience and his record since he came, he scored goals and whatever else, it was always going to be difficult to keep hold of him. It, for me now, it needs it needs a bit of, you know, a, a late 20s player or whatever else to, to come up front. Somebody that has got that proven quality, yes, you can bring a couple of younger players in, that's fine. But replacing those two and I've seen some fans having a pop at them in terms of the fact that last season they didn't deliver as much as they could and if they had a done Barnes they might have stayed up mm-hmm. which is a fair point but I think overall they they, they weren't the issue for me but mm-hmm. they, they will need to be not like for like replaced but you're going to need somebody of the same kind of ilk yeah I think definitely I think in this league as well, like a big, strong... Because Morris, it was a bit of a target man, but also very mobile, which is one thing which I think allowed him to thrive because it, it was only finally played off the left, played off the right, but he was that big, strong um, sort of physical presence. And I think, especially in this league, that's something which you need because in the Championship, you can kind of get away with a little bit more because it's a little bit more cute and a little bit more... It's more stylistic over there. And I feel like in League One, you need them gritty, big, strong lads just to aim for. So I would say that we probably do need a bit of a physical presence at the minute because I feel like we're light up front when you've got Devant Acol and Iseka who are going to, at the minute, are the two, stri- two, two starting forwards. I do think that we do need that physical presence. Would you say that is something that we would need as well? You've got to have players that are able to essentially mix it in different ways in, in League One. Watch plenty of League One because we've always at at Radio Sheffield always covering (laughs) at least one or two teams in in League One, it seems. And you will have teams that can play. There's some good teams at the top of the division. There's some big teams in League One. We we saw that last season. You know, Sheffield Wednesday made the playoffs and struggled to get out of the division in the end, but are going to go again. And they've they've really recruited strongly this year. And there's plenty of others. You know, you think Portsmouth and Ipswich are going to come again. And there's loads of others too. But equally, there's those teams at the bottom, the kind of bottom 10 teams that will mix it, will make it difficult, will come to Oakwell and sit behind the ball and look to spoil and look to do all this. They did it with Rotherham last season plenty of times. They just came and made it difficult for them. And Barnes have got to be wary of that. So yeah, you've got to have that quality to be able to compete in the top end of the pitch and go up, go up against those better teams. But equally, you've got to put the hard yards in. It, it, mm. It's a tough division. I mean, look, look just a couple of years ago, Sheffield United took... How many is six years to, to get out a League One? We've seen plenty of other clubs that have gone through the divisions. There's no given mm-hmm. this year. So I, I, I think there are players in there. I'm not, I'm not concerned that Barnsley won't be able to do both of those jobs, but you do have to have those qualities. Yeah, definitely. I think looking at the size of this decision in, in this division, sorry, I feel like I have to agree with you because there is the sort of that bottom 10. When you look at it, you've got teams like Chel- Cheltenham trying to compete with Derby, who've just signed Conor Hurrien, and they've got uh, Mendes Lang as well. They've brought in some quality players of Derby, even given their cir- circumstances. And then there is that sort of, like you said, that, bot- that bottom 10, 12, that they've just not got the budget to compete with them, with, with them kind of teams. So who would you say we have to look out for this season like who would you say could be up in uh, up in that sharp end well you've just mentioned one in in derby that circa two or three weeks ago i'd i'd be worried about them you know they they still hadn't been taken over they'd hardly got any players this last couple of weeks you reeled off some of the names i mean even david mcgoldrick from Mm. sheffield united just signed chester as well they've brought in uh, wildsmith from wednesday who you know for me never got a proper run in the team always thought he was quite good I think they now are probably up there with Wednesday and a few others, the, the teams that, that are going to be really strong. And it will be tough. You know, by me saying earlier that Barnsley should be going for that top six, there's no given right they'll get in that top six. There's some big teams like, you know, Charlton and a few others that, that mm. were nowhere near that top six last season. So it's not a given. But I just think that's got to be the aim. And, and to be pushing in there, solid start to the season, Get yourself in that kind of mix, in that top 10, in and around it, and they'll be in a good spot. But there's no doubt in it, there are some good teams in League One, and it's not just going to be a case of, oh, we're one of the three relegated sides, we're going to walk this. Not a chance. So, I'm going to put, put me on spot here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, where, where do you think we will actually finish this season? Like, if you have to give us a definitive position, where would you say? <sighs> Difficult, like I said, lots mm-hmm. of factors involved. Yeah. As as we are now, as we are now, I will probably go eighth. Mm. Okay, on the basis that I just think it needs a couple more. 
up, particularly up top, if Barnsley are really going to compete with those top sides. I would love to see it. If the squad shapes up even better, some of the new lads come in, if some of the money that is brought in, because if a couple more go, Styles go, if Helix goes and they bring in some more money, hopefully some of that can be reinvested. There's some great young players here. Um, there's some good existing players. I think the goalkeeping department is strong for League One. Um, then they can have a good season. But equally at the minute, you just look at it and feel like, oh, OK, a couple more. I'm expecting a couple more to go. Going to need them to replace them and others going to struggle. I'd probably say eighth, but I'd hope for more. I think I have to agree with that. I think, like, like I said, there is a lot of there's still a lot of work to be done. Um, given that Morris and Woodrow have just gone doing his recruiting in that in that department, and then there's a lot of there's a lot of unknowns and uncertainty this season because we've got uh, we've got Herbie Kane coming back in off loan. Um, we've got Michael Duff, who's worked with Josh Benson previously in Burnley 23. So I feel like there's a lot that we are still yet to see this season, but it. I feel like I do agree. I think eight or just in around that top six is somewhere that we have to aim for. And I think we should make it. It's going to be, I think the deciding factor is going to be who we bring in up top to actually score the goal. Because at the minute we've just sold as main two goal threats from last season. Two quality players. And the thing is, yeah, we don't know how things are going to settle down. It's a new era. There's a there's new board in place. Mm -hmm. We've talked a lot about the players, but clearly Michael Duff coming in. Really like the way he spoke at the opening presser. Really like the fact he's a he's a club man and he's just had these two clubs all his career and he seems to be saying all the right things about coming here and kind of making a, building something else here, and I think he 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 looks like a good fit. He looks like a good fit for the club. He sounds right. He clearly wants to take that that next step. Um, exciting coaching team with Martin Patterson coming in along with Martin Devaney as well. They've all got little bits to know each other. So that encourages me. Um, and if, for example, Barnsley did just dip out this year or what have you and it, it, they did build, I'd, I'd, I would very much back it. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what it looks like under Michael Duff. I think it's a, it's a good choice. Um, who knows before it's kind of going back to previous appointments in years past. And if you look at it, more of the foreign managers had success than didn't. Mm -hmm. So you can't say that approach didn't work. But this uh, this appointment is exciting. Yeah, I think it is. I think there's one thing with, with uh, Michael Duff, which, as you mentioned, has been a two-man a two -man club. And it's going to be the one sort of question mark got over him is that adaptability. Because obviously he's been at Burnley for X amount of years. He started his career at Cheltenham and then went back and managed him and obviously done, done really well then. I feel like that, familiar, that familiarity would have helped him a little bit. So I think it's been quite interesting to see how he does adapt to obviously coming into a new club, which that's the one sort of grey area I've kind of got with him. Because as you say, I really agree with, I think his playing style's brilliant. I love the way he's coming to the club already. Um, you saw him the other day at the 23s game. Um, so I feel like he's really invested in the club and sort of the community as well. But at the same time, I just want to see how that adaptability does work for him. And I think that's that one grey area which could be could be a slight issue for me. Is that something which you agree It's football, with isn't it? It's football because you, you genuinely don't know how things are going to go. You know, things can look great on paper and they do look great on paper. You know, he's he's got the, the kind of right um, up-and-coming young UK manager. You really kind of... Um, seems to play in a, in a good way that, that fits. So on paper, you kind of encourage. But like I said, you kind of need to plug a few more players into that mix in, in order for, for Barnsley to compete. But I think there's plenty of reasons to be encouraged. The club's making the right signs. I think the club is keen. It seems to learn from last year and the severe disconnect that it had with the supporter base, which was just the last... Apathy is the way I'd describe the last three or four months. Not enough people cared. And, and if people don't care, that's worse than anger. Yeah. That's worse than people getting frustrated. The club seems to be trying to address that. New man in, new board, bit of a change around, hitting the ground running. Need a little bit of time, bit of patience, mm -hmm. I think, as well. But I think at the minute, things bode well. Things bode well. Well, that's encouraging for me, Adam. I'll take that. Um, and as always, Reds, make sure to like and subscribe. And we'll catch you later.